Hey everybody, I wanted to come on today to talk to you about creating social stories using, using artificial intelligence. Social stories are really great tools to help our students understand different situations and how they can respond to different situations. So today there's eight prompt ideas I'm gonna share with you. If you wanna read more about social stories, the background, um, why and when people might use them, you can head on over to the blog for that. But here I'm gonna be showing you um, how to input the prompts into ChatGPT. That's the tool I'm using. You might use Copilot, you might use something else, Gemini. Um, but for this example, I'm going to use ChatGPT. I just tend to be more comfortable with that tool. So that's why I'm picking it, no other reason than that. Um, and so in the blog post, I talk about the different areas that social stories can maybe help with. Of course, it's not an all-inclusive list. And then I provide some a general prompt and then some specific prompts. So I started out with this one, um, an emotional regulation and coping skills prompt. I put it into ChatGPT, that exact one. And here's the output it gave me. Um, staying calm when I feel frustrated could be the name of the social story. Um, at school, I try my best to listen, learn, and have fun, but sometimes things don't go the way I want them to. Maybe I don't understand something right away or a game doesn't go as planned. When this happens, I might feel frustrated. And it proceeds to talk about frustration, the choices that you can make to help yourself feel better. Making a good choice helps me to move forward. Um, her, the body starts to feel better. Your brain can think clearly you know, acknowledging that we all feel frustrated and that I'm learning and growing every day. So I really like the overall feel of it. And that's partially because the prompt says the tone should be supportive and encouraging. I've included that in the prompt. So I think that helps. If it wasn't as supportive and encouraging as you hoped, you could ask it to rewrite it. Then I asked it to create an image to create this story. And this is what it gave me. And so um, I pasted it over here in a Google Doc. And then that was the text. And then I could also include this at the top and you could share that story with the student. So let's try another one. How about social stories and peer interactions? The example on the blog is about taking turns. So I'm going to input the prompt again, create a structured social story about taking turns, explain about conversations, reinforce that learning to take turns makes conversation is easier. The setting is in the classroom and the tone should be supportive and encouraging. All right, let's see what we get. Taking turns in conversations, therefore talking and listening. I like to talk to my friends, teachers, and classmates. Conversations help us share ideas. Um, when someone else is talking, I can show I'm listening by looking at them, nodding, waiting for them to finish before I start talking. I wait my turn. If I, if I interrupt, the other person might feel like I'm not listening. When I wait my turn, I show that I respect what they are saying. Person speaking pauses and looks at me. Someone asks me a question. I use a quiet hand signal, helps conversation. I can practice. I can play a listening game. I can use kind words. So you might like this one. You might not. Again, it depends on the student. Um, you know, whether you would want to use this, let's ask it to create an image to support this story. All right. While it's creating that image, I'm going to grab the next prompt and we'll see how this one works. Let's see what we got for our image. Almost there. And again, what I mentioned before is you can, oh, this isn't bad. It's really not bad. Quiet. I'm waiting my turn. Of course, the, the words aren't that clear there. You would have to do some editing, but it's a general, general idea that, you know, gets you started. Um, also, the reason why I forgot to mention this, but you can just paste over here in Google. It's really helpful because you can edit any of this once you put it over here and maybe you, you know, you want to use the child's name or you want to change what the strategies are, any text you want to change, anything you want to change, you can easily do that in the Google Doc um, uh, because you can't really just edit what ChatGPT sends out. Okay, so now let's try this one on personal space. This is a common issue that you might see in classrooms. School, I spend time with my classmates and teachers. Sometimes we work together. Personal space is the amount of space a person needs to feel comfortable. 
Some people like to be close, others need more space. Different comfort levels. Okay, why is it important? Explains that in easy to understand language. Um, using the arm's length rule, check my body position, use a designated space, ask if I'm unsure, is this okay? When I respect my friends and teachers feel comfortable around me, it helps everyone focus, learn, and enjoy being together in the classroom. The more I practice, the easier it be to remember. If I forget, my teacher or friend might remind me, and that's okay. I might change this, what happens when I give people space. When I respect personal space, my friends and teachers feel comfortable around me. I, I don't know. We don't know that. You know, we don't know what their reactions are. So I might ask it, um, please rewrite this section of the story to be more empowering for the student, not based on others' responses. Okay, let's see. What happens when I understand? I feel more confident and more control of my body. I can move comfortably in the classroom, focus on my work, and interact with others in a way that feels good for me. Re respecting personal space helps me build positive reaction. I like that one. I think I like that better than, um, you know, what the previous answer was. Let's ask, and again, we could tweak it. You could bring it over to Google Docs and write it however you want. All right. Create an image. I probably should have been more specific. Let's see what happens. All right. And then we're going to try transitions. Wow, this is always an important one. Okay. All right. I'm going to paste this in. So for the transitions is, let's say, high school. Okay, yeah, this page, this picture's, it's not horrible, but not great. I would ask for a new one. Um, you know, I like the arm's length example here. The text is a little bit much with the arm's length. It would have to be edited. Okay, let's go with this one. Let's see what happens here. We're moving on to handling transitions. Again, this is a common topic that people might um, create a social story for. High school, my day is filled with different activities. This is I have to stop, switch to something new. This is called a transition. They happen all the time. It's normal to feel frustrated, worried, or even excited during transitions. It's part of my routine. I can use a visual schedule. I can set a timer, have a favorite transition phase, phrase, give myself a moment. Transitions help me stay on track. Even if I don't feel ready at first using these strategies, the more I practice, the easier it gets. Every day I successfully move from one thing to the next. When I use my strategy, I feel more in control and ready for whatever comes next. I'm learning, growing, and becoming more flexible. I, I like those kind of endings. I might say, um, I really like this one. Let's continue this style with the next prompt. I like how M powering it is for the student. Okay, let's try one more. Okay, this one is about washing hands. The setting is, I'm going to go with school again. All right, let's see what we get. Hand washing is part of my daily routine. At school, I use my hands for everything, writing, touching my desk, opening doors, high-fiving my friends. Just like eating, sleeping, and brushing my teeth, washing my hands is something I do every day. I wash my hands before eating lunch, after using the bathroom, after sneezing, when my hands feel sticky or dirty. I turn on the water, I get soap, I scrub, I rinse my hands, I dry my hands. I can use strategies to make it easier. I can pick a favorite soap scent, make it a habit, use a towel right away. Hand washing helps me feel my best. I'm taking care of myself and the people around me. I feel clean, comfortable, and ready for the next activity. Hand washing is a simple way to stay healthy and I can do it every day with confidence. I like it. Again, here, if you wanted to copy and put it over in um, your Google Doc, let's do that. Okay, so now we're adding a story about the hand washing. And maybe this student um, does not like paper towel. So I can use, and you can edit this, a hand dryer right away. You know, you're giving them that example. Um, so that helps them. Let's see. Create a visual for the hand writing, sorry, hand washing social story. 
So I think you're getting the general idea of how helpful this can be. Again, you're using it as a starting point and you're editing it for each of your student based on their individualized needs. But I do think it can save you so much time. If you're planning on writing a personalized story for a student, this is just a super easy way to get your creative juices flowing, to get it down on paper. You can change whatever you need to change. And, um, or sometimes it might be exactly what you need. So this is a pretty good, of course, there's, you know, spelling errors here and it might not be the exact step. So you might not want that, but you can give it um, directions to remove text in the image. Sometimes it listens, sometimes it doesn't, but it's giving you the general idea. So you can hop on over to your therapy source. You can check out this blog post. Um, if you don't have time to create your own social stories, we do have some that are ready for you, making friends social stories, going to the doctor, um, bathroom social stories. So these can be resources that you can get right at your therapy source. But I would love to hear, um, you know, what you think if you try this out in ChatGPT, if you have success, and if you want to read all the details and get the prompts, you can head on over to your therapy source and search for creating social stories with AI. Let me know if you have any questions and don't forget to like and subscribe.